Good night, Bob. I need to pick up some papers in the boardroom, Scotty. I'll only be about 10 minutes. Well, I'll take your time, Judge Jessup. Hello. Thanks for coming, Sarah. Where are you? Close. Don't you trust me? You're a judge, and I'm a wanted felon. I came alone. I know. I've been watching the park. Come to the top of the escalator. So did you. Oh. What happened, Reno? I looked into the file. This Lieutenant Dixon must be lying. You didn't even ask me if I did it. I don't need to ask. I've partnered you for 18 months. Part of being a judge is judging. I'm glad one of us got to where they wanted to go. What can I do for you, Reno? There's a small-time felon. His name is Hound Adams. He's a, a witness. He's got evidence that proves I didn't commit that murder, and I was thinking maybe you could plug him into police computer, see if he's being held somewhere. Done. I'll look into it right away. Don't you look great? You know what we want. Don't take any of that modern stuff on two. Stick to the main exhibit on the main floor. Bring the van to the loading dock. And we are out of here in ten. as usual? Yeah. Killed in the commission of a felony. Give Carrick a call. We can use a marksman. Right. Yeah. Showtime, Metro Convention Center. We got four guys from the late show. Bring your party favors. <laughs> right. Another cart. I'll take this one to the loading deck. He was a cop and good at his job, but he committed the ultimate sin and testified against other cops gone bad. Cops that tried to kill him, but got the woman he loved instead. Framed for murder, now he prowls the Badlands, an outlaw hunting outlaws, a bounty hunter, a renegade.
got, Ted? Front door, who wants it? That's me. All right, kill shots, you guys. Nobody makes it to the booking desk. Calm down, Ted. I'll use this. Just try to save the taxpayers a few bucks, eh? Let's do it. Police SID. Where are they? Upstairs. The main level. There's a woman up there. Board member. All right. Get out of here. Move it! How you doing there? I know you. Sergeant Carrico Quinn. I'm the guy that dragged you out of that building. Hey, 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 hey. You need a search warrant to do that. Not if you can't get out of bed, I don't. Vincent Black. Wasn't there an old motorcycle called the Vincent Black Shadow? I don't know. You tell me. Vince Black. Sounds like an alias to me. So does Carrico Quinn. Six killer enterprises. Bounty hunter. You mind telling me what you were doing in there, Vince? Looking at the art. A bounty hunter who carries a nine millimeter SIG has a tattoo on his arm and loves art? You gotta be the only one on the planet, Vince. You ought to be careful not to stereotype people, Sarge. What were you there to see? The Lichtensteins or the Matisses? You didn't come here to talk about an art exhibit, did you? No. I just wanted to make sure you're all right. Well, thanks. You know, there was a woman in there. I know, a judge. The police told me. Her name was Sarah Jessup. You know her? No. All right, Vince. Hope you're feeling better. Who is it? Who's in the room? Just checking your chart, ma'am. Am I going to be able to see? They won't tell me. I'm just an orderly. Mike. 
Look, Eric, I'm doing confessions right now. I really can't talk to you. I'm your brother. Half-brother. I need help. The damn roof has fallen in on me. You watch your language. You're in the Lord's house. I'm screwed up, Mike. Give me ten minutes. Meet me in the garden behind the rectory. This better be good. That was in the paper, all about your Medal of Valor. Congratulations. You really smoked those guys. Really put them on their train to glory. Say hallelujah. Is this some kind of tough love thing I'm getting here, Mike? No. I just don't know how my little brother ended up putting armored piercing devastators into his fellow man. I pray for you. So now, what's your problem? You're oozy jammed. You want God to fix it? I don't think I can do it anymore. Yesterday, I got in a situation, Mike. I fired my gun, and a woman I was trying to protect got in the way of the muzzle flash. She may be blind. I fired on instinct, Mike, because that's what I do. That's what I've been trained to do. Maybe I could have taken a second and rolled her out of the way. Maybe I could have taken a hit and survived. I had Kevlar on, but I just fired. I'm not sure. Somewhere along the way, I got lost. I told Lily on her deathbed I'd never change, but I have. I was 15 when I met Lily, and I knew that I'd met my best friend. I was never going to meet anybody else. We got married, and I became a cop because I wanted to help people. Her cancer changed that, and it changed me. Everyone has pain, Karen. It's how you deal with it that makes you who you are. You know, you ought to be a priest. Hmm? You're pretty damn good at this. You know, it's okay for me to swear in God's garden. You really shouldn't try it. <laughs> Feeling, huh? Like I've been shot in the chest and two people are trying to sneak me out the back door. Isn't the hospital gonna miss him? Are you kidding? They lose people in here all the time. It'll be days before they notice he's gone. You know what I want you to do? I want you to run down this Kirko Quinn thing, see why they're so nosy. I'll check with the department, see what I can find yeah. out. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Where exactly are you guys taking me, huh? Where am I taking you? You know what I've done for you? I got the Winnebago parked outside so you can have a nice little weekend at my cabin up in the mountains, all right? A little R and R. And uh, Will Shy here, she's volunteered to be your candy striper. <clears throat> That's great. You gonna wear that cute little uniform, Shy? Whatever the patient wants. Welcome back, Miss Jessup. Thank you, Willis. Good to be home.
promise is a promise, Lil. I will never break it again. I'd like to be up a little higher. Do you have anything on 16? Go away. Go away. First back. The strap's broken, but everything's there. This thief here stole it. I was trying to get a tape out of my car. It's all right. It's all right. Say you're sorry to the lady. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Let me give you some money. No, no, no. I don't want your money. Now, your elevator's here, all right? Just take care of yourself, ma'am. Come on. Good evening, Mr. Connor. Good to see you, sir. Look, I'm up on 16, you know? Tell me something. You know Judge Jessup, the one who got blinded? Does she ever come out of her apartment? I mean, I've only seen her leave just once, and that was to go to her car. Judge Jessup's been dining on Vinny's Pizza every evening at 6, sir. Pizza? No kidding. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Willis. That's for 1608, right? Yeah. Thanks, I'm starved here. Keep the change. Thanks. Hi, can I help you with something? Have you seen a, a pizza delivery man? Oh, no. Uh, he was supposed to be here 20 minutes ago, and I'm starving. My name's Jack Connor. I'm your new neighbor. I just moved in down the hall, and I don't mean to be forward, but if you're starving, I, I just cook dinner, and I can't cook for one. No, I just want my pizza. Well, I've got pasta. No, thank you. Hey, Jack Connor again. Come on, you gotta take some of this pasta. Just give it a taste, huh? I hate to eat alone. 
Oh, you're bleeding. Huh? Your knee. You must have banged it. Here, let me have a look at it. How bad is it? It feels like I cut it. I don't know. Let's look at it. All right, kick it up here. Oh, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's the kind of wound my mother used to kiss and tell me to forget about. Hungry, Mrs. Jessup? How did you know my name? Oh, uh, your mailbox is next to mine. So it is, Mrs. I was married. Our careers got in the way. Let me guess. Yours went further and he couldn't handle it. Something like that. Well, I like successful women. Save the boyish charm, Mr. Connor. This isn't a date. We're just two people sharing some food, all right? I'm not helpless. I know. You're blind. Yeah, for now. Well, I have eyes. Now, here's your plate. Here's your fork. Let's eat. <sighs> the police didn't do anything? They just wouldn't believe me. It just seems so strange. I mean... If it is the man that killed that councilwoman, then, then why won't the police listen to me? And now they just let him go and he's out on the streets? I mean, frankly, I'm scared out of my wits. He could come after me. Let me give this some thought. You come back this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Father. I just don't know where else to go. God will bless and protect you. That woman who just left. Her name is Laura McMillan. She saw the killing of Councilwoman Watson behind the nightclub she manages. It's a little jazz joint called the Second Coming. She picked the guy out of a lineup, but the police let him go because he had an alibi. And now she's afraid he's gonna try and kill her. Are you offering me a job? I'm offering you penance. Now, can you help me? All right. I'll talk to her. But I don't want her to know it's me. Deal? Deal. Hey. I'm quitting the force, Mike. You told him yet? No. I'll get around to it. I can use the paycheck. That's stealing. In case you haven't heard, that's a sin. <laughs> but I have you to resolve me, right? <laughs> I'll tell him at the end of the week. I'm still on desk leave until the shooting review board comes down on the convention center thing anyway. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Michael, right? Brother to brother. Half brother. I don't want you to laugh at me, OK? <laughs> hey, I'm serious about this. All right, let's hear it. The woman I told you about, she's a criminal court judge. And I've been thinking, you know, maybe I should reach out and help her put her life back together. I think that's wonderful. Yeah? Really? I think that's a very worthwhile thing to do. Yeah, well, you know, it's going to put me on the unemployment line. But I think I can make it. I still got Lily's life insurance money, and I think she'd want me to use it this way. Well, there you go. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah? Is he springing for lunch? Well, you never know. He springs for mine. Are you going to eat that without saying grace? I didn't think so. <laughs> Jack Connor. Hi. The dinner the other night was wonderful, but I'm having a rather difficult time right now, and I'm not looking for new friends. You got a vacuum? I got you some low-cal uh, gourmet TV dinners, stuff that's easy to cook. Oh, you think I'm fat? No. You're just right. What are you doing? What is that? Don't move anything. I know where everything is. Oh. So you want this old anchovy? I mean, we can get out a casserole dish and we'll throw him in, see if he might do the backstroke. Personally, I don't think he's going to do it. 
Into the trash with you, Archie. Okay, okay, will you stop, please? Just stand still for a minute. I'm standing. Okay, I just want to be left alone. So you can feel sorry for yourself? I don't feel sorry for myself. What, are you kidding me? I can hear the oboe music playing all the way down the hall. <laughs> what does it matter to you? I didn't invite you into my life. Look, Sarah, you're not helpless, but you need help, and I need somebody to help. Let me help you. I'm a judge. How am I going to do my job? A blind judge. I can't see witnesses. Look, I can't evaluate look, evidence. I went to the library. I got a magazine article about a judge in Wisconsin who lost his vision because he had diabetes. They assigned him to the appellate court. You don't have to see witnesses on the appellate court. You just review decisions. Look, I'm a trial court judge. I try cases. The only person who's going to stop you, Sarah, is you. I can stop a bus and get 50 people off it who are going to tell you how something can't be done. you got to be the one person on the bus that says, to hell with it. I'm going to win this game, and I'm going to do it on my terms. Now, let's get this place cleaned up, OK? Then we got to start on your closet. I mean, we've got to organize your clothes by color or something. No offense, all right? But you look like you got dressed by a circus clown this morning. And by the way, there's a woman named Clarice Wright that's going to be calling. She's with the Braille Institute. You can start there tomorrow. What? Can't go back on the bench if you can't read. In the meantime, we'll hire someone to read your casework to you out loud. And we need to get you a seeing eye doc. Do you like a shepherd or do you like a lab? Look, you can't just come in here and take over my life. My wife died of cancer, Sarah. She was just 23 years old. And up until the day she died, she was still writing children's books. The last one was about a frog. Wanted to be a movie star. It was very funny. And when I asked her how she could write such a funny book when she was in such pain, you know what she said? What? She said, I'm not very good at dying, but I'm still a hell of a writer. She sounds brave. <laughs> so are you. Give me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been two weeks since my last confession. You're not here to confess. You're here to get justice. Father O'Quinn? No. He asked me to meet with you. Tell me what happened. Well, wait a minute. Who are you? Can I see you? No, that's not the way I work. You'll know me when you need to know me. Now tell me what happened. Well, I don't know where to start. Um, it was Friday night. I heard a woman screaming in the alley by my nightclub. I went to the door, and I saw him standing over a dead woman. Councilwoman Watson? Yeah. And he saw me standing there. Did you call the police? I did, but by the time they got there, the body was gone, and they picked the man up. I identified him, but then they let him go. A few nights later, he came back, and he tried to kill me, and the only thing that saved me were these guys that were coming out of a bowling alley next door. And no one else saw him the night of the murder? No, oh, my bartender usually walks me out. But he quit the night before. I'll see what I can do. right there. I'm here about the bartender job. A salet shift pays $4.58 an hour plus tips, and you split $60.40 with the house. Look no further. I'm your man. Tell me the difference between a Manhattan and a Rob Roy. Manhattan is bourbon or rye sweet vermouth bitters with a cherry. A Rob Roy is scotch sweet vermouth bitters with a What's your name? Jack Connor. All right, Jack, you got yourself a job. Give me a day's work, and I'll give you a day's pay. Poor I'm lean. on 15 are starting to atrophy. You think drinks are anywhere in the future? Liver transplants in that guy's future. I filled him up six times in the last hour. You want to set up an IV? Oh, I am glad you find this so amusing because you are going to be buried in orders in about 10 minutes if you don't stay on top of it. Yes, sir. After
After work, I want you to help spray down these mats, mop off the bar, and make sure all those bottles are stacked in the back, okay? Laura, did I mention how much I enjoy working here? <laughs> Who is it? Jack. Hi. Wow. You look beautiful. Kate came over and gave me a hand. You're late. Yeah, well, my brother had a friend who needed some help, and I had some time, so I helped her. Her? Is she pretty? Very. Hmm. Well, I called the presiding judge of the criminal court, and I got a meeting about maybe getting my job back. Sarah, that's great. What kind of job did you get? I'm a bartender at a jazz club called The Second Coming. I need to ask your opinion on something. Go ahead. This police officer who blinded me, his name is Sergeant Carrick O'Quinn. He's part of a unit they have downtown called SID. Look, Sarah. No, listen, I, I need to think this through. I have three options. I can sue him. I think he acted with disregard to my safety. Or I can file criminal charges against him because I think SID is little more than an assassination squad. What's your third option? I can do nothing. Just forget it. you, Sarah. You have to do what you think's best. I wish I could see you sometimes. I can't understand your moods. Men and women aren't supposed to understand each other's moods. We're going to invoke Civil Code 170.6. You're going to pay for me? We're allowed one preemptory challenge on every case. The district attorney's office is going to be forced to use one each time on you. Oh, you're going to use 170.6 on me? That's crazy. It's for showing bias or prejudice. Sarah, I can't have every case I try before you wind up an appeal because of your condition. I don't have a condition. I'm blind. Which any first-year public defender will use as a basis for an no appeal. No one in this city has a better record on the, the bench. Presiding judge, you talk to her. What about the appellate court? All you'd have to do is listen to arguments. Well, what about traffic court? All I have to do is listen to lame excuses all day. Now, all I'm asking you to do is let me do my job. Sarah, even if I don't force the issue and let you return to the bench, it'll wind up before the Committee on Judicial Performance. And they'll probably recommend that you take your pension now. Just give me two weeks, Henry. If I can't cut it, then I'll go quietly. How are you getting along? Well, aside from the fact that they want to throw me off the bench and I can't sleep a wink, not too bad. <laughs> well, I just want you to know, Sarah, that if you need anything, anything at all, all you gotta do is ask, okay? Actually, there is one thing you could do for me, Reno. Name it. There's this cop named Carrick O'Quinn. He's part of the Special Investigations Division. He's the guy who did this to me. I think they're operating as an execution squad. I want to know how many people did they arrest in the last year? How many did they just kill? I might even want to talk to him. I'll try to find out whatever I can. Criminal court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Sarah Jessup presiding. Call the first case. Your Honor, case number 4108, people of the state of California versus Andre Jefferson. The people wish to invoke section 170 of the criminal code, Your Honor. On what grounds, Mr. Berman? People do not need grounds, Your Honor. The clerk of the court has the necessary paperwork in hand. Call the next case. Your Honor, case number 4109, people of the state of California versus Hugh Watson. <clears throat> the people wish to invoke section 170.6, Your Honor. Is it just me or do I sense a pattern forming here, Mr. Berman? Call the next case. Your Honor, those are the only two cases we had on the docket this morning. 
Well, I'm here and I'm ready to adjudicate, so I suggest you get the city attorney to send down some more. I'll ask him myself, Your Honor. It may take a few hours. I'll be here all day, Ben. You have been hanging around the police department lately, Sarge. Yeah, well, I'd love to talk about my future, but I got a blender going here. Sarah Jessup wanted me to find out a little bit more about the man who blinded her. Funny thing, though, police department records show a gap where your name used to be. Now, SID isn't pulling those records from its computer, is it? Police records are often laced with inaccuracies and omissions. You know, I did a little checking myself. It seems like Vince Black, art lover, looks an awful lot like Reno Reigns, fugitive. Yeah, well, like you said, police records are often filled with inaccuracies. It's like we both got a little secret, huh? I'd say that's grounds for negotiation. What'd you have in mind? You want a beer? Sure. We were together maybe a year, year and a half, then I went to Vice. Real good partner. Can I help you with something? Where's that lady, though, the one that runs the joint? Who's asking? You're a bartender, not a bouncer. Come on, where is she? I'm the bouncer. Take it easy, I was just asking. I recognize this guy from his police photograph. I think he's trying to kill the manager of this place. You want a wingman? Yeah. I'll flip you for position. Your call. Heads. Tails, you lose. Looks like you're working the alley. It's the story of my life. Make sure I understand you. Unless I prosecute this case in Sarah Jessup's court, you're not going to turn over the eyewitness who can convict him? Yes, that's correct. What's your connection to Judge Jessup? Well, I heard you're wasting her talent. 
And the Lord says, waste not, want not. This is crazy. The man Laura McMillan identified had an alibi the night Councilwoman Watson was killed. And then he stalked her and tried to kill her. I'd say that negates his alibi. So now you're practicing law too, Father? I have a lot of hobbies. What do you say? You want this guy or not? Henry? Oh, great. You two know each other? For 20 years. Negotiating with him is useless, Ben. He's got God on his side. Even if I agreed to this, I can't guarantee the public defender's office will go along. Well, sure you could, Ben. You could ask. Up to you, Ben. Your call, Ben. Oh. Case number 5203, people of the state of California versus Franklin Cantrell. That's your cue, Mr. Berman. And the district attorney has no opening motion, Your Honor. We're ready to proceed with the arraignment. OK, then, Ms. Jackson, it must be your turn to invoke 170.6. The public defender has no cause to allege bias or prejudice, Your Honor. We, too, are ready to proceed. Well, then, I guess we should proceed. Your Honor, the state alleges that Franklin Cantrell committed felony murder on the night of February 14th. We're asking you to found over Take this to table five, my compliments. Compliments to Jack Connor. Thank you. Thank you. What did you find out about Carrick O'Quinn? Well, I'm afraid it's not very good news. Evidently, he quit the force. Uh, nobody's seen him in days. I checked his address. No forwarding. Cop with a conscience. I guess there's still a few. Mm -hmm. 